Topic 4. Define Benefit Plan An Example First, I'd like to show you the pension worksheet that we'll be working with. This will be the same pension worksheet for each of ASPE and IFRS. The difference is that under ASPE, there wouldn't be other comprehensive income, so therefore this column for OCI would not exist. Rather, if there was an entry that we'll be talking about that would go through OCI, and you're looking at an ASPE example, you would put anything that would go through this column simply through the income statement through pension expense. Let's look at the important factors, the items that could go through this pension worksheet, and let's look at them line by line. First, we start off with the opening balance. And before I get into this, actually, I want to explain how this chart will work. We have two must-haves. And even before then, we have our on balance sheet or on financial statement, because this is a balance sheet. Um, we have our on balance sheet entries and um, items, and we have our off balance sheet, our memo only. So our first must have is that our on balance sheet, our defined benefit liability or asset, depending if it's in a credit balance or a debit balance, this must equal the sum of our DBO and DBA. So I put here, C must equal A plus B. And friendly reminder, a DBO would be in a credit balance and a plan asset would be in a debit balance. The sum of our defined benefit obligation and our planned assets, as we discussed in the previous video, equals our net either DB defined benefit liability if it's underfunded or defined benefit asset if it's overfunded. So C must equal to A plus B. Then all of our financial statement, FS, journal entries must balance. So if we just look at this column, pardon me, these sets of columns, and if we included a positive number for a debit and a negative number for every credit, if I went like this and summed up all the journal entries that we're about to do during the year. So notice I leave out opening balance because we have some income statement and some balance sheet items there. By sum of all the journal entries that happen throughout the year, this would be equal to zero. So that's one of my checks. And how do I know it's equal to zero? Because all of my financial statement journal entries must balance. There must be a debit for every credit. So that means that every time I do a line, this line should balance. This line should be zero. So I have two things. Every time I do a line, my C must equal my A plus my B. And my on journal entry, my on financial statement journal entries must equal to zero. All right, so let's look at some examples. First, let's set it up. Uh, we'll be given some case facts at the beginning. And if we're given no case facts, we can just assume all of these balances are zero. So you'll have no opening balance for pension expense because it's an income statement account. You may have something for OCI. You might have some cash and you may either be given your net DBL D DBA or you could be given your DBO NPA. If you're giving nothing, just keep this uh, row in, but also put it as zero. Next, we have our current service cost. These are costs that we are going to evenly incur throughout the year unless otherwise stated. So our current service cost represents, just like with our defined contribution plan, this, these are the post-employment benefits that our employees are currently earning. So if we look at this, that would be just like under our DC, our defined contribution walkthrough, it would be a debit to our pension expense, and it would be a credit, it would increase our defined benefit obligation. So this is different under our DB pension planning, but just like our DC pension example, it increases pension expense. The only thing is we are putting it into a bucket of cash um, or a bucket of liabilities that really we are promising to pay out later. So increases my pension expense, this current service, costs that the employees are, are earning this year, uh, but being paid out in a future year, this increases our DBO. And then 
my C equals my A plus my B, so my credit is going to equal to my DBO here. Some students will just automatically say, you know what, forget about it. Forget about DBO, DBA. I'm just going to plug my thing here and go do, 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 all the way down, and I'm going to skip ahead. But the reason why we're doing this off balance sheet and while we're doing it line by line by line is this is all you will ever see. So if you understand each one of these lines, how they come to be, any permutation or combination of this example, you will be set for. The reason why we include off balance sheet items, DBO, DBA, is because um, you may be asked to find out what the expected DBO is or PA, and then that is how we calculate later our remeasurement DBO and PA, uh, so our actuarial gains or losses. So that might come up and it might not in a question. So you might just start plugging away with our financial statement journal entries and get lucky. Um, so really just up to you if you wanna take the risk. But let's go through it line by line. Past service costs. So past service costs are booked the exact same way as our current service costs. The one thing that we would need to keep in mind if we need to calculate what our expected DBO is, is that past service costs are always added to the opening balance of our defined benefit obligation unless stated otherwise. So in the case facts, if it's said that past service costs are recognized you know, partway through the year, then cool, then we put it in partway through the year. But really what we're trying to do is figure out how, what is the balance of this DBO if we need to calculate interest, so expected interest on this, because we will book interest on this, I'll just skip down the line, as a pension expense, and this increases our DBO. So just like with accretion expense, the fact that we have this defined benefit obligation hanging out out there, and it's gonna be more than a year, this needs to be discounted back, which means every year that passes, we are gonna be incurring a finance expense. We need to reflect the passage of time, the economic reality that the time is passing and our obligation is getting bigger, and therefore rep uh, represent the finance expense, which will be an increase, a debit to our pension expense. Then my C equals my A plus my B, and this balances. Now, just like my finance costs represent a passage of time, I also have this big bucket of cash that I'm gonna be using to pay out this GBO in the future, and this earns interest as well. So if I've earned interest, it will be a debit to the planned asset, so make it bigger, and it would be a credit to other, it could be to, oh gosh, um, you know, revenue earned on planned assets. We just say that it's a credit to the pension expense. We'll have it just roll up to this item on the income statement. This could also be a column that just says income statement. The whole point here is that it is not touching our OCI, our cash, and our essentially it's not hitting our our balance sheet under under IFRS, anything here. And if this was under ASPE, then it's definitely not hitting our balance sheet items here. Okay, so contributions. Now this is when an employer is contributing cash to the pension plan to the pension fund. So if they're paying some cash, that's gonna decrease their cash accounts and that's gonna increase the plan assets. So they're paying it to the third party, the management company, the trust of this pension, and it's gonna increase the amount of assets there. Then I have my C equals my A plus my B. So I have a debit to the plan assets and I have a debit here. Do a quick check, my debits equal my credits on the financial statements, and I'm good to go. Now I hit my remeasurement for my defined benefit obligation. And keep in mind that it will act the exact same, but opposite for remeasurement of my plan assets. Here, I will be taking a sum of all of my costs, all of my balances here, and I will be seeing what I expect my DBO to be. So what do I expect it to be? And then I get this statement from our actuaries that say, oh, no, 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 this is actually what the present value of the, so essentially the past, present, future, what is the present obligation that you cannot get out of that represents the past 
transaction, the fact that you have employees working for you now that will represent a future outflow of economic resources, aka cash. So what is your DBO in today's dollars? And they'll tell you, and then any difference would be a remeasurement gain or loss, and it would either increase, so credit to your DBO, or decrease, a debit to your DBO. This would be offset to OCI under IFRS or under pension expense under ASPE. And then the net, if this was a debit here, it would be a debit here. And if it's a credit here, it would be a credit here. And then it, this essentially brings up your DBO, you're expected to equal your actual. Some things that you will see that will impact this would be your current service cost. Again, if it is earned evenly throughout the year, then your finance costs would be earned evenly throughout the year for that portion. And current service costs, unless otherwise stated, would be uh, just added right to the opening balance. Friendly reminder that this financing cost here, that is on the entire balance. But if it's on interest earned, um, if current service costs are earned throughout the year, then we would need to make sure that we include just a weighted average portion for that amount. So two things going on here when you're doing your financing costs, that's being cognizant of when the actual expenses, uh, pardon me, when the actual liability had increased. Okay, and now we do the same thing for our plan assets we look at what we expect to have under our plan assets and we um and we look at our interest earned we look and see uh, sometimes there won't be or actually many times there won't be any remeasurement uh gains or losses on our plan assets if there's you know fairly unrisky things um you know a bunch of just term notes in our plan assets but nonetheless we say great, what do we expect to have in here? Then we get a note from our third-party trust provider. Cool, that's what we actually have in here. We make an adjustment, a debit or a credit, to bring this up to actual, um, actual amounts. And then we put the offsetting item to OCI, so it could be a debit or credit here, could be a debit or credit here. And then to make sure that we balance on the financial statements, we say, a plus B equals C, and we are good to go. Our last entry is benefits paid. So these are benefits paid to the pensioners. So we have people, they've retired, and they're getting some money. Uh, this would decrease our plan assets because the plan is going to directly pay these retirees. And this would decrease our defined benefit obligation as we no longer owe them money. Students will often hit the financial statements on this, but you know, we just did all of this work so that when people retire, there's money to pay them. So no financial statement impact here because our A will always equal our B. We're, pay we're paying them with um, their the plan assets to pay their obligation. So as long as this is uh, funded, as long as there is kind of an ongoing pension here, um, then there wouldn't be an impact to our financial statements here. All right, so if you've done everything right, then when you add up what happened during the year, you can add it all up here and have a debit or credit balance here. You can add this all up here, debit or credit balance here, Add it all up here. Things that went on during the year, notice how I'm not taking the opening balance. And then things that happened here. When I have that, I have my journal entry that should balance or that will balance if I followed all these rules. And then I do one journal entry to debit or credit pension expense, OCI, cash, and net DBA, uh, DBL, and we are good to go. Alrighty, let's look at an example. The facts. We have fair value of plan assets at the beginning of the year of 120. We have a DBO of 120. Current service costs, we're gonna assume at, were added evenly throughout the year. And we have past service costs of 6,000. Actual earnings on plan assets during the year were 12,000. Employer contributions for the year were 9,000. Benefits paid to retirees, 11,000. And benefits 
um, interest rate of 10,000. For this example, expected return upon assets are equal to the actual return. All right, so let us put those factors into our pension worksheet. Okay, so we have our pension worksheet here, and I'm just going to pop up the facts so that they're nice and handy. All right, so we have our opening balance here for our plan assets at the beginning of the year for 120, and we have our opening plan assets here, pardon me, 120, and our opening balance of our DBO here of 120. Our C equals our A plus our B, and so we have a net DBL, DBA of zero. We never have anything for pension expense, and we haven't been given information about cash, so we'll say that it is nothing. We've had current service costs of 10,000, so that increases our pension expense by a debit and increases our DBO. We then make sure that our A plus our B equals our C, so we have a credit to our DBL, and our debits equal our credits for items on the financial statements. We do the same thing for our past service costs. And then we get to actual earnings on plan assets throughout the year. And we are told our actual earnings and we're told that our actual equal are expected. So we have a credit to pension expense and an increase because we earn this money on our plan assets. And then our C equals our A plus our B. And we do a double check and we in fact have our debits equaling our credits here. Okay, so we now have our employer contributions to the year. So our employer pays cash out the door of 9,000 and that increases our plan's assets. Our C equals our A plus our B. So the employer contributions is going to decrease our overall net DBL. All right, and then we have benefits paid to retirees and our benefits get paid directly to the retirees from the fund. So that decreases the future outflow of economic resources because it's happening now. And it also decreases the assets because that's how we paid them. We take a look and this, our DBL, DBA net is the net between the two of these. And this remains true. There's nothing that hits our financial statements. So nothing to, nothing to, to impact here, this balances. Okay. So we're giving, we're given no information on the current balance of the DBO, D, uh, of the DBO. So there's no actuarial uh, gains or losses for remeasurement here. So now we are going to see if our journal entry balances, we are going to see, we're going to do our checks, pardon me, for our last line. So first we're going to take this and this is a cumulative function. We are going to add up all of our debits and credits here to get our ending credit balance of our DBO of 125,000. We're going to do the same thing on our plan assets, add these all up and we get a debit balance of 130. Our first check, oh, and then we're going to do the same thing here, but remember, we are going to be adding up all of this, we are going to be adding up all of this, and we are going to be adding up just what is going on here to get our total journal entry balance. And if we weren't given, um, if we were given, pardon me, um, an underfunded or an overfunded, we would have a separate line here. And this would be to, uh, to represent, this would be, um, there would be a total line or total journal entry. And then this would be listed one further. And then this is where this would be, where it would be actual totals for the, the net of these two. So total journal entry and then total ending balance. Okay, and that's where this would go as well. Because then that would be the accumulation of this plus this. And then this would be the total journal entry that we would book. Okay, so looking here, 
we add up, sorry, going back to this, we will look back and we've added up all this. This equals 125, this equals 130. Um, this should equal the, uh, the net, so C equals A plus B. Let's check it out. Now we have to figure out what our journal entry is gonna be, which we sum up everything that happened throughout the year. So we're going to have a, a sum of all these items. So we're gonna have a debit to pension expense of 4,000, a credit to cash of 9,000, and we are going to have a credit, pardon me, a debit to the net DBA for 5,000 here. Does this in fact balance debit of four, debit of five equals a credit of nine. So that checks out. And our ending balance, our C does in fact equal our A plus our B. So we are good to go. All right, let's look and see how that looks in our journal entries. Our summary for the year is a debit to pension expense for 4,000 a debit to our net DBA for 5,000 and our cash for 9,000. One quick question. The company reports under ASPE. If a company records an actuarial loss on defined benefit pension plan due to a change in actuarial assumptions, which of the pension worksheet accounts is not affected? Is it A, pension expense, B, plan assets, or C, defined benefit obligation. The correct answer is B, plan assets. The entry for an actuarial loss is debit pension expense, credit DBO. Under I4S, the actuarial gain or loss would go to OCI, but under ASPE, anything that would go to OCI would simply be put through the income statement instead. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.